So you wanna learn how to create the iPhone pop-up effect that you see in music videos, TV shows, and commercials all on DaVinci Resolve? Well, then you're in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna teach you the easiest way to create the pop-up iPhone text message effect in DaVinci Resolve. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into this. If you guys are interested in following along, all the footage, assets, and even some sound effects are for free in the description. Check that stuff out and download it, but let's get into it. So once you have all of your footage and assets imported into DaVinci Resolve, go ahead and drag your footage onto your timeline just like this, cut it down however you want it, and then jump right into the Fusion tab. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip our image. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because I want it to look like the text message bubble you see like I have here for an example, is coming from me as opposed to just popping out here, looking like it's coming from nothing. So to do that, all I have to do is add a transform node and then go to flip in the inspector tab and flip it horizontally. Next, we're gonna add in our tracker because we want the text message bubbles to be linked to our phone. So hit control and space at the same time and it'll pull up the select tool menu and then just type in tracker and just go ahead and add this one in. So with the tracker selected, go over here to the operation tab and under operation, go to match move and then just go back to the trackers menu. Now we're gonna actually track the image, but first I'm just gonna give myself a little more room by clicking on the single viewer display. So now we actually wanna track our object. And in this case, our object is our phone. But the problem is my phone actually blends in very well with my shirt and even the screen back here. So instead of tracking my phone, I'm actually gonna go ahead, grab the tracker and put it right on my finger because my finger is actually a hard contrast to my phone. And since I'm holding my phone with my hands, it'll have the same movements as my phone does. So with my tracker over my finger, I just adjust in. For some reason, I also don't know why when I grab this, it disappears. It's kind of annoying. It doesn't usually do that, but recently it has been. So just be aware of that. So now we just gotta size up our tracker a little. So I wanna bring in my tracking area just a little like this, and then bring in my search area fair amount. So I'd say something like this would be good. So now just make sure that your playhead here is at the beginning of the clip. And then in the inspector tab, click track forward from current time. And now Resolve is just going to go ahead and track that one point, And you can see right here how well it's doing. So now that we've tracked everything, we're going to go ahead and actually add in the text message that we receive. So next we're going to add in a merge node right after this tracker. So just go up here, click on merge node, and it'll be added in right there and bring the blend down to 0.8. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want the pop-up text message to be almost like a little see-through and hologram kind of pop-up thing. Next, add in a transform and connect the transform to the merge node. And this transform right here is gonna host our tracking data. So I'm gonna wanna rename it track. Hitting F2, just rename it to track. So now when we duplicate everything, we'll still know that this is a tracker node. Now open the media pool and grab the receive bubble and just drag it out. Now I'm just gonna rename this node to receive. Next, add a transform node at the end of the receive text message and connect it to this track right here. So now that we've gotten this far, we have to actually assign this track right here, the tracking data, because right now it's just a transform node that says track. So with the track selected right here, go to center and right click on it. Then go to connect to and go to tracker one and then Go all the way down to unsteady position. So now if we play it through, you'll actually see that the bubble is tracked with our phone. So if you click on the transform node, you can grab these arrows and just move it over to wherever you want it to. So now we wanna animate this bubble so it pops up just like when you receive a text message. So go to the place where you want the bubble to actually pop up. So I'm gonna do 290. And then with transform two selected, go to size and add a keyframe. This is gonna be our ending keyframe. Move backwards four frames with your arrow keys and bring the size all the way down. So now it just pops up and it's not that fancy. So go back to that first keyframe we made that I said was the end. You'll know that you're on a keyframe when this diamond button is orange. So instead of having it end at one, let's move it up to where it ends at 1.015. Now move to the right two frames and bring it down to about 0.988 or something around that. Next move over one frame and then bring it up to about 1.008. Then for the last one, bring it back down to just to one. Now open up the spline tab and make sure that you have your transform two checked. Hit this fit to zoom button and then highlight all of these keyframes and hit S. 
S just smooths out all of your keyframes. So now if we close out the spline tab and we go back to look at it, you'll see that the bubble has a nice subtle bounce. Now to make this bubble seem like it's coming up from the left, we have to move our pivot point around. So just go ahead and move the pivot to the bottom left somewhere like this. So now I'm gonna grab this transform node and bring it down just like this and click on the receive text message node right here. Then I'm gonna add in two merge nodes right here. Next, we're gonna add in our text, but we also want to see who's texting us. So we need to add in two text nodes, one right here and then one down here, and then connect both text nodes to the merge nodes just like this. So just type out whatever message you want, then change the color to black, and then the font to Arial. Click right here under H anchor, and now you'll see that it actually is all anchored from the left. Finally, bring down the size of the text because clearly it's way too big and then reposition it somewhere in the middle area. You don't want the text to be super close to the edges because then it's just not gonna look good. So have it somewhere like this. Now clicking on this second text, all we have to do is add who this is coming from. So I'm gonna type in mom because my mom's my biggest fan, I guess. Then change the font to Arial, then bring down the size and zoom in and just adjust your text around to where it's floating above the text message like this. Next, after this third merge note here, we're gonna add in some glow but I've always found that the glow does not actually look that good. So we're gonna use shadow. So add in our shadow node right here after it and under softness, bring it up and change the color to white. So now it just adds a subtle glow around the edges like that. At this point, we've pretty much done all of the really hard work. So what we're gonna do now is just move all of our nodes like this over, highlight all of these, hit control C, and then move over and hit control V. And now we've copied it once and now paste it two more times. And then just connect all of these merge nodes together like this. Well, now we have four copies of the same thing. So obviously things got to change. So first of all, I'm going to add in four underlays. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it just helps you keep organized. And also it's just going to help you guys know more what's going on. So with each underlay, just grab it and drag it over one of these like node stacks right here. And now once we've done that, I'm gonna rename the underlay. And this first one right here is received. The second underlay is gonna be for our send. The third underlay is for the typing animation. And then finally, this last one right here is another received. So now go under our send section right here and delete this received and then drag in the send bubble. Then just connect it to the merge node, change your text, and then change it to who's sending it. So in this case, I'm sending this text message. Next, under the typing column, delete both text nodes like this and the received. And then from our media pool, drag in our typing. And this is actually a video that I created. It's a loop of text bubbles just like this. So if I put this in the dual viewer and I put this in, our, in the first viewer by hitting this bubble right here, you can see it has a green screen. So we have to remove the green screen. Hitting control and spacebar, bring up the select tool and go to Delta Keyer. Add that in and then under background color, grab it and hit pick screen color and then just select green and hit okay and you'll see that it actually just keys it out really well so now you can delete one of these merge nodes right here and just connect this delta keyer with this merge node right there and still with this delta keyer selected add in one more transform node because we want to bring down the size of this bubble because you can see it's a lot right there so just bring down the size like this and then move the center over just like this now we're gonna move on to our last text message. And because it's an exact copy of the first one we received, we actually don't have to change the person's name. All we have to do is type the message that we want to pop up. So now that we've done that, we have to space out the keyframes because right now, if you notice, all of them come up at once. So we can do this multiple ways, but I'm gonna do it in the spline tab. So I'm gonna click on the spline tab. And since I know that this received two is gonna be the last text message, I'm gonna click on that one first and find where you want this to pop up on your timeline. I want it to pop up somewhere like right here in this area. So as I'm zoomed out all the way like this, I'm gonna highlight my keyframes and I'm gonna hold shift and grab them and just drag them all the way over to where it starts right there. Now you see it pops up later where we want it. So I'm gonna deselect this transform two dash two. You can also rename these. I just was kind of lazy and didn't. Next, we'll select the typing animation, which is gonna be this transform two dash two and turn it on in the spline tab. Now, once again, find where you want this typing bubble to pop up, then highlight all of the keyframes, hold shift, grab one of the keyframes and move it over to your playhead. 
then just deselect this transform and do the same exact thing for the rest of the text messages. So now that you've got your animations timed out correctly, what we have to do is we have to now make the animation that scrolls up. So just scrub through your timeline and find when the next text message appears. So it happens right around this area. So what I'm gonna do for this first text message right here, under received one, I'm gonna click on the transform node and I'm gonna keyframe the center. Then I'm gonna move forward a few frames to where the text message is just starting to get up like this. And I'm gonna grab my Y axis and I'm gonna bring it to about 0.75. So we just realized a little mistake here. With this blue bubble, the text is actually supposed to be white. So you can just click on your text and then change the color to white. And now it looks better. Now scrub through your timeline again and find where we had that typing animation. Once you find the typing animation, move back a few frames to where it's completely out of the frame. Then under our send category, go to transform and then just set a keyframe right before the animation starts. Now move over a few frames, then under our center Y, type in 0.75. Then with our send transform node still selected, Put your playhead on the first keyframe where the scrolling up feature is happening. Then under received one, click on your transform. And while your playhead is still in that same place, add another keyframe under center, move forward to the end of the animation, and then bring it to about 0.95. Now, if we move through really slowly, you can see everything kind of scrolls up just like we wanted it. But I want this first text message here to fade out because ultimately I want there to only be two text messages shown at a time. So to make this first text message fade out, I move back a few frames to the beginning of this scrolling up animation. And then under the received one, I click on the merge node and then I add a keyframe on blend. Now just move forward to the end of this scrolling animation, bring the blend all the way down. So as you see, we have this first text message fade out like we want it. Now for this final text message that pops up, we need to make this typing animation go away. So with my arrow keys, I'm just gonna move to the left to where I find the beginning of this last text message animation. Then under this typing category right here, click on the transform to, then add a keyframe on size and pivot. Now move forward to the end of the animation where this text message is all the way up and grab your pivot point right here and move it to like the edge. Then grab your size and bring it all the way down. Next, we wanna change the pivot point of the send bubble popping up. So instead of popping up on the left side of the screen, we want it to pop up like it's coming from our phone. So under transform 2-1, grab the pivot X and move it from the left to the right side. So now the final step is to add the write on effect that simulates us typing. So find the beginning where our hands start to move. So under our send column, click on the first text and go down to write on. Add the first keyframe as soon as our fingers start to move. Then grab the slider all the way to the right and drag it all the way down. Now move forward and find where we stop typing. Then once you find that, grab the end and drag it all the way up. Now it's gonna look like we're actually typing the message. So now this is what we made. So there you have it, the iPhone pop-up text message effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can put this effect in their videos. I have a question for you. What kind of mouse do you use to edit? Let me know what it is in the comments below. I personally use this Logitech G602 and I've used it for about a month and a half now and my gosh, it's actually super nice. It has a bunch of buttons on the side and each one of them I have mapped to a certain function in DaVinci Resolve. So it actually just speeds up my editing process because I don't have to be hunting and searching for certain keys. If I want backspace, it's the top button. If I want to delete something, it's the bottom button. So if you're interested in the mouse, I'll put a link in the description. Check that out. It's definitely worth spending 28 bucks on a mouse, especially if you're gonna be using it every single day for like years. You've gotta have comfy thingies. Anyway, the video on the top is about five tricks in DaVinci Resolve that'll help you double your editing speed. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.